Hi, Grandma here reading The Door in the Wall, uh, Chapter 4. Now, um, remember we have talked about um, the door in the wall and what that means. Uh, what are some of the ways that uh, Brother Luke has helped Robin to uh, find a door in the wall? He carries him around, visiting other of uh, uh, the monks. He also has taught him how to whittle, and he also is teaching him how to read. <clears throat> June passed and the days lengthened into summer. The plague had died out, but with its going away, many of the people of London, even some of the monks, once more, the monastery kept its usual round of service to God and humanity. The monks who were left added to their own duties of those who died. Brother Luke sometimes helped in the preparation of food. Sometimes he carried Robin down into the kitchen where he would be warm on a wet day. It was there he finished the little cross. Although it's a yet too soon for thee to carve figures for choir stalls or for bosses for the chapel, a child's puppet could be more, made more easily. Why not make one for that poor girl child who hung up to my skirts that day? She dwelleth by Houndstitch in a poor hovel where I go on my errands. A girl's plaything? asked Robin. Then he began to think what fun it would be to carve out a face. He might even make arms and legs that would move. Hmm. Yes, he said, I will try. So began the making of the doll for the little girl. Head and body were to be one piece with arms and legs jointed. Brother Matthew will help thee to work that out, said Brother Luke. Soft pine was used because it was easier to cut. And then we have a, a picture, and I am holding it up. I hope you can see it. Uh, and it looks like it's a picture of Robin sitting in a cart uh, carving out a doll. Robin became so excited at seeing real features emerge from the piece of wood that he could hardly bear to take time to attend to his studies. Reading went well, and he was beginning to make fair characters in writing with the quill. On clear nights, Brother Hubert took him to a high tower of the monastery to tell him of the stars. He told Robin, too, of far countries, the Holy Land where crusaders had fought for the tomb of our Lord, and of Greece and Rome whose ancient languages were at the beginning of many other tongues. He told of Roman legions who had come to Britain centuries before, and of Saxon and Danish kings who in turn had ruled their land. Robin couldn't always remember which ones came first, but he liked to hear Brother Hubert tell about them. One day, Robin was sitting in the trundle cart, finishing the child's doll, when Brother Luke came into the garden. You know, I've been kind of wondering what a trundle cart was, and let's look at this picture. I think this must be what a trundle cart is. Can you see it? It looks a little bit like a wheelbarrow um, with one wheel, and then it has legs so that you lift up and, and roll it like a wheelbarrow. But uh, this looks like it's made of uh, thatch and, uh, so it's not metal like our wheelbarrows are. Thy hands are well used to the chisel now, he said in praise of Robin's work. That is a face and body right enough, and I see thou art attaching the arms. Will they move then? Yes, said Robin. See how the peg fits into the shoulder, then slips into the top of the arms, and it swings, see? It will make a little child very happy, said the friar. Now, because the day is so fine and thou art getting so strong, it might be well if we go fishing. Fishing? Could he really leave the hospice and go fishing? Even the fun of fitting arms and legs to the doll could not keep Robin from wanting to go out into the field or, and away from the bench and bed and stool and trundle cart. Oh, I could sit against a tree and fish too. Thank you? No doubt, agreed Brother Luke. Come then. He lifted Robin to his back, and they went down to the green, to the brook outside the walls. 
They fished for a time, each catching several trout, which they wrapped in leaves. The sun shone bright, warm, through the leafy grove. Insects droned in the noon heat, and the water slipped musically over green moss stones. It was very still. Suddenly, the quiet was burst with the shout of boys' voices. Six or seven urchins ran over the green, stripping off their clothes as they came. Robin, Robin, looking over his shoulder, saw Geoffrey Atwater, the same lad he had first seen limping through the corridors of St. Mark. Geoffrey raced down the bank ahead of all the rest, swinging his crutches ahead of him and taking in his stride twice as much ground as the other boys. Geoffrey saw Robin at the same moment. Hi, Crookshanks, he called. Art finding fish for their fasting? Off came that last ragged garment, down went the crutches, and with a whoosh, he was into the water with the others, and away with the current. Thrashing arms and legs beat the water into foam and spoiled the fishing. Robin wished with all his heart that he could go into the water and swim too. It was all very well for Brother Luke to bring him fishing, but it only seemed to make it harder that he couldn't run about or swim like the other boys. The friar saw Robin's hungry look. Off with thy jerkin, he said, at the same time rising and taking off his own habit. We'll give thee a good bath and cleanse thy humor. Who knows, mayhap we can teach thee to swim. He pulled off Robin's hosen and carried him into the water, holding and dipping him where the current ran deep. Now, swing thy arms about with fingers closed to push the water back. Robin pushed and felt himself moving along with Brother Luke walking and supporting him. All the troubles of the past months seemed to float away with the running of the brook and strength and power to flow into his arms. It was wonderful. Brother Luke didn't allow him to stay long in the water, but promised to bring him every day. For some reason I have had this in mind, he said. Now I know I was right. This will make thine arms even stronger, and soon they will help thee to get about on land as well. How? asked Robin, but even as he said it, he knew what Brother Luke meant. Crutches. That was it. With crutches, he would be able to go about as Geoffrey did. He could play at duck on a rock with the boys. He couldn't join them in hoodsman blind or hide and seek. Crutches would be almost as much fun as stilts. Then Robin remembered that his father expected him to be a knight. How could he ride horseback in chain mail while his legs were bent and he had to use crutches? How could he face his father? How bear his mother's pitying look? How would they feel to have a son who could not fulfill his knightly duties? I see thou hast my meaning, said the friar as he finished Robin crutches or crosses as thou have it tis all the same thing remember even thy crutches can be a door in the wall by the time they are made thou be ready for them god willing up now and hold fast whilst we go up the hill from that day forward swimming became a part of robin's everyday life Besides reading, writing, and the study of history and the stars, Robin was given certain duties in the routine of the church. At the lectern during rehearsals, he turned the pages of the missal. And then they're going to explain what this word means. A book of music notes large enough for all the brothers to see as they stood in the chantry. Each day, too, he worked with Brother Matthew in the carpentry shop. He liked the music and the carpentry better than the reading and writing, but best of all, he liked the swimming. It made him feel free and powerful. Even on cloudy or rainy days and when the weather was quite cool, Robin was taken for his daily swim, and soon he was able to dive beneath the water and play tricks on the good friar. Once when the boys saw Robin's little boat, they begged to be allowed to sail it too but they were so eager to try it that soon its rigging was broken and its pennant dragging. So Robin helped each of them make a boat of his own. Jeffrey's was made from a piece of the willow overhanging the brook. A twig stuck in a wormhole made the mast. 
another twig through a leaf served for a sail. Then Dickon must have one, then Alfred, and the swimming hole became a boat yard. Sometimes they marked out squares on the sandy bank and played a game of checkers with brown stones. Sometimes on hot days, all the time was spent in the water, and the boys raced to the weir and back. Once Robin beat them all. Crookshanks here is as fast as any of us, Jeffrey said proudly. Then Robin felt as if he were one of them. Once when Robin dived underwater and hid in the rushes, Brother Luke at first scolded him, for he was frightened. Then he said, But I am glad for thy mischief, for it's a sign thou art well. Robin had another reason for knowing he was well, but he kept it secret. Work was begun on the crutches. They would be simple, straight staves with cross pieces at the top to fit under Robin's arms. Brother Matthew had found the wood of proper kind and size, then he sawed to the, it the right length, allowing a little for finishing. Brother Luke wheeled Robin to the shed where he could watch. When the first piece of wood was put into the vise and Brother Matthew began to draw the spoke shave down the length of it, Robin thought it time to tell his secret, for he wanted very much to have a hand in making the crutches with which he hoped to walk. Can I shape the pieces, th thank you, he asked. Look, he directed, I can bear my own weight upon my feet, though I can't stand long, nor can I straighten, but can I not lean against the bench? To the surprise of both brothers, Robin hitched along slowly toward Brother Matthew's workbench, where he leaned for a few moments before he found it necessary to sit down. Now praise our Lord's mercy, said Brother Luke fervently at the same time putting forth a high stool for Robin to sit on. Now t'will be thine own crutches thou wilt wear, made by thine own hands. Brother Matthew blessed himself to show how grateful he was and arranged the work so that Robin could better attend to it for himself. It was more exciting to work at a real bench, to draw the sharp knife along the clean wood, to hear it snick as the knife took hold, and then slither off into shavings. The oak was very hard and took real strength to work, but swimming had given Robin good muscle in his arms, so that little by little he was able to shape the staff. Several weeks went by. Robin finished the crutches, but at last they were done, and he could hardly wait to try them. There should be padding and leather on these cross pieces, said Brother Luke. Let us go into the city to the Pouchmaker's Guild. I have errands for the prior as well. Besides, it's Midsummer's Eve. We shall see the gaiety. Shall I walk then? asked Robin. For look you, I have been trying the crutches already and can go at a good pace. See you? Robin slid off the stool, fitted the crutches under his arms, and was off across the garth all in one motion. Softly, softly, Brother Luke advised. Tis a good way into the city, even though its sounds and odors do seem to reach us here. It would be better to go pick a back. I think we call it piggyback. And carry thy crosses most of the way. Thou be glad of thy old back. Ere we come to Ludgate, I'll be bound. It was exciting to go back into the city, especially this midsummer's eve. The doorways were decked with branches of green birch, long fennel, and St. John's wort. Some had garlands of flowers, white lilies, and such like. Neighbor was merry with neighbor, and those who had wealth set out food and drink before their houses for all who passed by. Oh, can we not stay even a little while, Robin begged. No, my son, when we have done with our errands, we shall go back. The brace girdler down Leather Lane willingly gave Robin enough leather to cover the cross pieces of the crutches and hair to stuff it. "'Tis not fit to be sold, he said, being poorly dyed, but twill serve thy purpose. They were not far from Robin's home, but he had no wish to see it empty and deserted. How he wished he had been open and his father and mother there. 
So we learned another way today of determining uh, vocabulary, and that is by using the pictures. So again, we see this picture, and that we have to uh, deduce is what a trundle cart is. Some of the other pictures are a little bit hard to see. Like this is a picture of him swimming. And here's a picture of him riding to town on Brother Luke's back. Now remember, they sometimes call crutches crosses. And uh, you've got to think about what they look like. A, a crutch has like a, a stick and then a cross piece that goes under your arms. Um, looks a little bit like a cross or a T, the letter T. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.